The hallway was dark when Tempest left Sentinel's office. Only a few constantly burning lights guided her as she walked back to her apartment. Hands shoved into the pockets of her sweatshirt and thoughts spinning like a cyclone. There was no reason for her to even concern herself with what he had said. If she had been compromised, he'd have shot her. He was the team leader. She should feel relief that he would act outside of his emotions for the good of the team. Maybe it was the turmoil surrounding Ares that was making her feel so... disgustingly sensitive. Or maybe it was the fact that she couldn't guarantee that she would do the same. Would she have fired on someone she believed was part of Ares? What if it was a team member that had gone rogue? Yeah, she wasn't sure about the first one. The second she thought she could do. The clear and present danger was the difference. Eliminating a threat was easy, wasn't it? It wasn't easy for Sentinel. He looked years older than he did at the start of the mission, but she was sure that Medical had something for that. After all, the Medical team's umbrellas assigned to the initiative could cure anything. It was why she was even there, walking down the long halls to the residential wing and the little apartment she had been assigned. Her parents had sold her to save her. She and her sister. Tempest wasn't often still angry at them, but she was young. Maybe it would sting more when she was older. The wound might not have been fresh, but it still ached every once in a while if she bent the wrong way or moved too fast. It bled, too. Before she was Tempest, she was Ari Pack, ten years old confined to a hospital bed in Seoul National University Hospital. In the bed next to her, her twin sister, Jia, spent most of her time sleeping. She didn't blame her. Jia had a stroke just months before, and the right side of her body was paralyzed. It wasn't as bad for Ari. The disease had just caused her to have seizures when she was a baby. But whatever recent scans had been forced on her after Jia was hospitalized showed the doctor something that had them insisting her parents have her admitted to. They never told Ari what it was exactly, but her mother often looked at her with haunted eyes. Her father hardly looked at her at all. Like they were trying to distance themselves from the little girl. From both of them, really. But Jia was more insistent about the attention she so desperately needed. She was understandably terrified. Ari, on the other hand, was bitter. She knew she was probably going to be paralyzed too. Eventually. So, why couldn't they at least let her do it outside of that horrible place? Running barefoot through the fields while both of her legs still functioned. It made her turn her head away from her distant parents, pretending like she didn't need them. Instead, she spent her time watching the flocks of birds outside her hospital window and talking to Jia when they were alone. It was hard to understand her twin sister since only half of her mouth worked, but Ari had always understood her twin, even before they really knew how to talk. Her parents would say that it was just a twin thing, after all, genetically, they were basically the same person. Ari and Jia were three when they were first diagnosed with Moya Moya disease, an ailment that narrowed, or in their place, blocked the important corroded artery to their brains. It caused their bodies to try and grow other pathways for the blood to no avail. It wouldn't have been obvious if Jia hadn't been clutching her head and sobbing on and off for days, even as a baby. But after a barrage of tests and scans, it was discovered that not one, but both girls were suffering from the disease. They were too young to understand, and she couldn't even remember what her life had been like before they started to handle her like she was made of glass. Ari wanted to be wild, 
She wanted to be a feral, dirty thing, splashing in streams and turning over rocks to revel in worms and other creepy crawlies she found underneath. She wanted it so bad that she could almost taste it. So when they found Jia in bed one morning, unable to move half her body, Ari had been scared, of course. But she also mourned the childhood that they would never, ever let her have afterward. Moya Moya meant puff of smoke in Japanese, she had learned. Ari often felt like that, just a puff of smoke, barely noticed, easily blown away. Maybe that's why she latched onto her codename so strongly. She didn't want to just be a puff, but a storm, a tempest. Yeah, she could do that. But she hadn't felt like a storm at all, locked in that hospital room. Her parents and doctors discussed treatment options, risky surgeries and experimental therapies, but her parents were on the razor's edge of being poor. So they kept the girls in the room. Ari tethered to her bed even when Jia would be taken away for physical therapy and waited for the right choice to make itself obvious. It made her feel so weak, so breakable. The bruises on her skin, the scrapes that she didn't even remember receiving, made her feel hollow inside. A puff of smoke, bird-boned, drifting on the breeze. Because of the way the days bled together into an amalgamation of time all the same, she didn't register the umbral agent flanked by two umbral physicians who came into her and Jia's room one dull morning. She was watching the murmurations of birds outside, wishing it was her, undulating in the chill air, one among thousands. It wasn't until she heard Jia mumble out a word, Ari from the bed beside her that Ari focused in. She was a perceptive child, and the difference in the three newcomers was obvious when she really took the time to look them over. The Seoul National University Hospital was a top-of-the-line facility, but the Umbral Trio didn't just look expensive. They looked futuristic, sharp and shining. It made her sit up straighter in her bed, the restraints tugging at her wrists and ankles, barely noticed for once. The agent was dressed in a perfectly tailored suit, black on black. The umbral doctors wore white coats just like her normal doctors, but they were buttoned close to the throat, the buttons latching closer to their left shoulders instead of down the center. The bottom of their lab coats were edged with two black stripes, each one of them wore a small collage of patches over their hearts, slightly different from each other, the meaning of which Ari didn't know. Rankings, maybe. One of the new doctors had Jia's chart in their hand, standing at the foot of her bed and flipping through the pages. Their usual doctor was hovering at the doorway, looking both awestruck and nervous. It's the other one, their usual doctor told the newcomers. The other one. Her. The second umbral doctor approached her bed and plucked the chart from the foot of it, raising one dark eyebrow as a smile slowly spread across his face. He looked up at Ari from behind rimless glasses. Oh, you're a special one, aren't you? Ari didn't say anything, but her heart rate kicked up when he circled around the bed and undid her restraints one by one. Ari wasn't tied up all day, but when there wasn't someone to watch her, it was a necessary evil that she understood in a vague way, but hated with every atom of her being. They had to restrain Ari for the same reason she had to sleep in a locked bubble tent as a baby. For the same reason, she could never chew gum or play even low-energy sports. It wasn't because she was fragile from the Moya Moya. It was because Ari Pak had one other thing wrong with her, something she didn't share with her sister. Ari Pak didn't feel pain. 
It was a nightmare for a set of parents who had to make sure their daughters never exerted themselves too much. Ari would frequently bite her lip or the inside of her mouth until it bled, or take a fall and bleed excessive amounts from a cut knee without even realizing it. The last straw had been when she fell off a swing set and snapped her arm, a compound fracture that had an ivory white bone sticking out of her skin. She cried from the shock of seeing it, but not from the pain. This was why she was picking at the bone with her free hand when her mother found her, a screaming Gia pulling her by the hand to see. Her mother all but fainted. The ambulance had to treat them both. The agent turned to the unoccupied doctor. Her parents understand the deal. They often only really comprehend the portion where we treat the kids for free, and not what comes after. The soul doctor nodded once. Yes, they're afraid that even if she's cured of the Moya Moya disease, she'll end up getting herself killed because of the congenital insensitivity to pain. There have been some close calls already. As long as she will be raised comfortably, the children we take into the program grow up in a sort of boarding school with their peers, at least until they're adults. She'll enjoy it. He looked over at Ari, rubbing her numb wrists. It has to be better than being tied up like an animal. We have to have her, the doctor reading her choice said loud enough for the rest of the room to hear. Get the parents in a private conference room and we'll go over everything. As for you, he focused back in on Ari. If you're lucky, before the day is out, You'll be out of this place. Everything moved and fast forward from there. One doctor and the agent went to talk with her parents while the second doctor stayed with the sisters to explain in simple terms what would happen. Our vascular surgeons are the best in the world, and we're confident they could correct the Moya Moya disease in both of you. For your sister here... He jerked his head towards Jia. We also have procedures to reverse brain damage that have an absurdly high success rate. It was developed for injured soldiers, but, well, it should work just fine for her, too. Tempest's heart soared. Really? You can really fix us both for good? Yes. But, as you will learn... Umbral gives nothing away for free. In return for these miniature miracles, you will come with us. This absence of pain you feel is a gift, not a curse. Umbral will nurture that. But like most of us there, you will belong to them. He sighed, looking out the window at the birds, just like Ari always did. It... It isn't such a bad existence. I just want to be out of here, Ari breathed. And you will be, as strange as it might sound. Considering your ailments, your time with Umbral might be the most normal your childhood has ever been. Her parents came after two hours, beside themselves with joy of their children being cured, and the grief of one of them leaving. Maybe forever. As an adult, Tempest would wonder how hard it was for them to sign the paperwork to let Umbral take her, if their hands shook, or if they ever had second thoughts. Just like Sentinel's impossible choice, she wasn't sure what she would have done in her parents' position either. Gia, though, wasn't having it. She raged from her hospital bed. Miserable, heartbroken tears, and snot running down her face as she demanded that they either leave her sister or take her too. Leaving the hospital was all that Ari had wanted for so long, but it hadn't really sunk in that she would be losing her Gia, her other half. It still burned all those years later. 
Umbral had made her familiar with pain, something that she had lacked all her life. But there was still agony when she hugged her sister goodbye. Each girl had a blanket in their bed, made by their grandmother before they were even born, and Jia had shoved hers into Ari's arm at the very last second. Don't forget me. Sobbing openly, Ari had done the same, giving her sister her own blanket, and even trade. The only thing they would have of each other. Before her first mission, Tempest had cut a strip of that precious possession and tied it around her upper arm, a reminder of what she gave up to save herself and Jia both. It gave her little time to say goodbye to her parents as well, and she would see them here and there as the years went on. Graduation, her 18th birthday, maybe a holiday that had slipped her mind. Umbral was in the United States, and South Korea might as well have been a world away for her parents. They never brought Jia, but insisted that she was happy and healthy, showing Tempest pictures to prove it. She pretended she understood that seeing each other for so brief a time would be too painful, but it was a lie. Tempest was still hurt but by that time, hurt was something she had learned. Umbral kept her free of pain until the surgery to correct her Moya Moya disease was finished and she was done recovering. There was a battery of tests, but that was nothing new for young Ari. Pain was such a foreign concept that she didn't even comprehend what it was. Until Umbral showed her, of course. They had plans for Ari. Plans to make her stronger and faster than she would have ever become in her normal life. Plans to make her a warrior. And while it was useful for a warrior to be resistant to pain, a little bit of sensation was necessary for survival. They introduced her slowly, giving her small doses of naloxone at first, and letting her explore the new feeling on her own. Ari was sat on a bed in an observation room and given unpleasant but ultimately harmless things. A thumbtack, cigarette lighter, one of those handheld buttons that dished out tiny shocks as a prank. It was the last one that she tested out first, curious, and had her entire worldview flipped upside down. Ari thought she must be dying the electricity zooming up her nerves and into a previously unused portion of her brain, giving her the worst, most horrible, blindingly painful experience she had ever known. The girl screamed, throwing the deadly weapon away from her, clasping her injured hand against her chest. Ari howled and sobbed what she thought would be her untimely end to the ceiling. The doctors observing her had laughed behind the two-way mirror, feeling small pangs of guilt for the poor girl. To be ten years old and be hurt for the first time was unimaginable. Now Tempest could look back on that moment and laugh too. They had eased her up to be able to tolerate the same amount of pain that a normal person could before dialing it back to a minuscule level, enough for her to avoid biting her own tongue off on accident and recognize if she was sick or injured, but that was all. Nothing, not even the first time she had been actually shot, had ever hurt like that first tiny shock to her palm. Tempest unlocked her apartment and went inside, opening her hand and looking at it in the overhead light. It was calloused and scarred, nails blunt and short, she wondered what Gia's hands looked like, hoping they were smooth and unmarked, maybe with manicured nails. It made her smile, just a little to consider. Her sister always craved to be beautiful. Tempest, on the other hand, had never gotten to be the wild thing she yearned to be, but she came close. Umbral made her strong, swift, and when she was old enough, deadly. They saved her sister, 
and made her into a weapon. Looking around her sparse living space, she told herself not for the first time that it had been worth it. She thought about Jia daily, thought about her running, braiding her own hair, doing all the things she wouldn't have been able to had she still been paralyzed. Even if Sentinel had slipped up and Tempest had taken the bullet, it would have been worth it. Even if Ares, the team she had been so proud to join, felt like it could shatter at any second, it was still worth it. To be a warrior, to be strong, unbreakable, like the doctor had told her that very first day, it wasn't such a bad experience. <laughs>